this is a big visual effects film where you actually have to create worlds and characters. So creating parallax is uh, very exciting. We're working to really create something visual and something tangible that is frightening. It was my greatest dream realized when I walked into that room and saw what they had done with Parallax. It was brought to life before my eyes. I was blown away. Uh, one of my favorites, Parallax. It's largely the work of an artist, um, Justin Sweet. We all had a go at it, of course, and you know, as the ideas became more refined, it sort of came to be based around the husks, the spent husks of alien beings that have been consumed by Krona. All these appendages of fear, terror. Yeah, it is. And they're all built to terrorize people, to raise that fear, to get them more. I think it is, yeah. They, 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 they instill fear in people, and when the fear is there, then that's what they, that's what they go for, and they wrench that out. And, it's, and you can imagine it'd be agonizing. So, in a way, the agony that you face when you die is still within the faces of these creatures. For Parallax, Martin's idea originally was that we wanted to create something that wasn't so much a specific alien monster. It was something more amorphous. I think he looked at one guy's image originally. It was a, sort of this kind of oil spill or something, light kind of coming through it a little bit. And Martin kind of liked that idea. Parallax, it started off as a thing called Legion, and it sort of has its roots in this word Legion, where to me that suggests like a horde, like an army. We've then come to grips with what it looks like visually, and we've always liked the idea of it not being a ghost. It's actually something that's tangible and that is able to consume you, to eat you, rip you apart. This idea of all these souls being massed together and screaming in everlasting pain, it's like illustrating water. It's only the shape of whatever is containing it. When we look at it texturally, it's a conglomeration of alien species that has all become this sort of textural mass. You know, Cronus' face will be able to push itself out. It's almost like the way that, that a school of fish or a flock of birds is able to act like in concert with each other. The first sort of uh, step we do after concept art is to build the same thing as a 3D model. So you'd be able to kind of look around and have a, have a schematic kind of look at it and then add character personality to its face. So it's, it's a very interactive process and very collaborative. Just bringing life or movement to Parallax was a three-step process. First we created these like what, pods or sometimes we called them bananas because they were, they were yellow and they looked like these bananas just kind of doing their predator type thing. And then within it, the effects team run massive agents within it. This is actually a small section of these. We run procedural animation on it so they somewhat interact with each other. You know, we had animators going in there and animating each bone and each skull. We'll never get the film out, so they had to animate the body and then all the bones had to correspond. If you tweak one thing that isn't working, then something else might pop out. And then if Krona's head appeared, that was yet another step where we'd hand animate the main head of Krona coming out. One of the challenges with Parallax was actually a scale issue. We worked on them originally, really close up, and you could see all the writhing skeletons. And then as soon as we got wide on Parallax, he became more of a grey blob. So we had to go back in and rework Parallax so he worked in the wide scenes. As we got wider and wider in the streets, it's the scale of it was kind of a little hard to wrap your head around. Those shots are tricky because you're also trying to show all this detail of what it is and all these souls, but you're going wider and wider and it's just this huge giant wall. Obviously there's a lot of work to make sure he interacts with the environment, to make sure he casts shadows, uh, to make sure he doesn't bump into things or go through them. So he was very much like a sort of uh, bag of snakes. I think a Marston called him a bag of maggots. And a city shot where he's running through the city and interacting with buildings and attacking people, it can get pretty complex. And you're forced to kind of recreate in 3D space those buildings, what those people are doing as they're running down the street. You actually have to copy their movements into the computer and have the geometry interact with it. So it's always difficult to do these sort of characters and to, and to get it right. And thankfully, I think they pulled it off. All the effects, they're very complex. That was really tough on them, but they all worked their butts off. I must say, they were, they were marvelous.